So my man, would you say this is a safe area? Oh, this is very unsafe. Very unsafe. I think if they see, you know, three or four white dudes walking around, what might happen? Well, at first they're gonna... <clears throat> Howdy, y'all! Hey, it's Lord Miles here. I'm at the Mexican border, and the Mexican border trade for human trafficking has gone up from $500 million in 2018 to over $13 billion in four years. I go to the most dangerous place in the world, and today I'm going to cross the Mexican border to see what's really going on. The majority of the migrants that they're burying here, bro, are, they can't identify, or if they do identify, let's say a Venezuelan drowns and they identify, Yeah. They, they've been calling the constables of, the, of that country saying, hey, we have the body of whatever. The constables are like, well, we don't want to pay, you know, ten thousand, twenty thousand bucks. So the U.S. has been stuck with his bo with these bodies. The thing is, they're running out of room here, and now uh, the sheriff here has called the state of Texas, and they're basically putting these bodies now in refrigerator trailers about twenty minutes from here. Condos for the men. You'll see the Jane Doe's for the women, and unfortunately, you are going to see uh, baby John Doe's here. So those are the infants that have that have drowned in the Rio Grande. Yeah, that's that's the most tragic thing. The children. And this is so improvised too, you can tell it's just Oh yeah, yeah, these are what they call they're struggling. Uh, PVC pipes, these are makeshift yeah. pipes. I mean they got them off some construction yeah. workers who are just building some, I know, infrastructure. Yeah, let's see. Right? So see yeah, let's John see. Doe right here. Yeah. John Doe, there you look, see, look at that man. Yeah. And you have your baby John Doe, that was on August 13th. So I was, I was in Afghanistan during this time, yeah, so this was very recent. Oh, very, yeah, dude. Yeah. Damn, okay. <sighs> Yeah, look at this, hey. man. Look at you have August yeah. 10, August 4, August yeah. 9. They were just pretty print. It keeps going. Oh, yeah. Look, Honestly, August daily, 10. daily. August, August again. August. So these people are dying every single day. Yeah, so what local officials have told me, man, is that they were seeing maybe one to two drownings per year before Biden. Now, under this Biden administration, they're seeing one or two drownings per day. I think the month of September, they had one day where they pulled six bodies. Yeah. The ground is giving way as well, so it's not like some of these bodies might not resurface. What you're not you're seeing in the mainstream news, man, like, you know, you'll, you'll see mainstream media talk about the 50 migrants that got flown on Martha's Vineyard to this, you know, an area where it's like literally one of the wealthiest zip codes yeah, in but... the United States. But this poor town, like, why do you, I mean, let's just be real, like, this is not a town of white Americans. These are, these are brown, all these, all these border towns are 90% Hispanic. So they're yeah. the ones who are basically dealing with this, this part of it. Oh, yeah. The what, thing is, man, they ran, they, like I said, they ran out of bodies here. They're putting them in refrigerated trailers. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Put it in there, yeah, but maybe we put some of these around and. There you go, Miles. Not too bad. I'm doing better than uh, Joe Biden right now. <laughs> uh, how grim. So Frank, last time I came as well, I came like last early, I mean late September, mm -hmm. and I saw the like the cemetery here, the local one. Oh, you saw the cemetery? Yeah, yeah. where essentially was it like two people per grave are being buried that they're either not being able to be identified or they won't be taken in by the their uh, original country. Uh, what? Has it changed, uh, or like, what has it gotten much worse? It's September? it stayed uh, it stayed consistently the same. Uh, we're still receiving deceased. Mm -hmm. The um, the the problem issue we had is uh, the local mortuaries are no longer taking uh, the deceased migrants, so the state had to provide a uh, a temporary uh, cold storage yeah for them to be uh for the deceased to be stored and it's still up in the air what we're gonna do with them because right now i think is the last count we have five or six of the cold storage yeah still oh. in cold storage as of september we've had 160 deaths 160 since uh deaths in maverick county just maverick county uh that have, that have been uh that have been migrants either from drowning or that have passed away succumbed to the elements or because of medical issues uh here in maverick county but that like i said that was as of last month yeah. as of september i don't know what the recent number is i know we've had more but that is a rough estimate <laughs> guys when we see these very large groups of people crossing the groups of 300 up to 500 
these are organized groups yeah. that uh, have paid uh, smugglers to get them across. With the organized groups, with these 300, 500, these large groups, they pay the human smugglers to get them across. What they're paying for more is safety. Yeah. Safety part. The other side of the coin that we see is the people, unfortunately, that don't have the don't have money to pay the human smugglers to cross. They're they're pretty much crossing on their own at their own risk wherever, and they don't know where they cross. And unfortunately, they're the ones that are that are drowning. They're the ones that are getting in trouble coming across, and they're the ones their numbers are higher that they don't make it. Do you so, think uh, like the main demographics then of the people you guys might hear that drown more as well is that they they just don't can't pay these cartels for uh, crossing? Yeah, there's. You see, you see all sides of the spectrum uh, out here. Yeah. There are people that cross that it's very obvious. You can tell that, like I said, you see you see all all different kinds of uh, people, all, all different countries, people from different socio different economic backgrounds. Yeah. And yes, you do see people that uh, some people cross. And they have money; they can afford to pay a, uh, a smuggler to to cross them. And then there's others that cannot, and unfortunately, they're the ones that are, you know, the most at risk of being either taken advantage of or that uh, they just don't have any money, and they're just so desperate that they're looking for a better life for yeah. themselves. There's there there's a great amount of risk involved coming through several countries at the same, you know, having to cross through several borders. And unfortunately, Mexico uh, is not, you know, a very safe place. Uh, coming up through the border, Guatemala, Honduras, you know, uh, Panama, wherever people come in through, a lot of times we find that either, either the, the drug cartels have taken over the uh, smuggling oper human smuggling operations, mm -hmm. or individual gangs or other organized groups take advantage of the most. They wind up taking advantage of the most disadvantaged people, and that's the that's the saddest part. I hear so many stories from migrants crossing that they get taken advantage of by sometimes uh, law enforcement on on the other side of the river that uh, they take their money, they get, they arrest them. We hear stories of assaults, uh, physical assaults, sexual assaults. Uh, unfortunately, and I hate to talk about it, child exploitation, uh, sometimes outright. We hear stories, situations of pe people being beaten, left for dead. I'm assuming Border Patrol is tied up somewhere else. If DPS is picking up these folks, then that means that there's gotta be another large group somewhere else. So we've just crossed over from the US to the Mexican side. It's very easy, didn't have to show my passport. I paid, uh, I think it was one dollar. And we're here at the moment. So you don't need to stamp your passport until you get about 20 miles into Mexico. So there's less border security than South Sudan and Afghanistan, lovely stuff. And we're going to be smuggling routes. So what can go wrong? And also we had loads of people saying not to go this way. So of course we're going that way because that's a good indication that we're going for the right way. <laughs> So whether if you're in Afghanistan, South Sudan, the front lines of Ukraine, or to one exchange that you have control of, use Samurai Wallet like I've done in all my travels. It's non-custodial, but which basically means you have control of your Bitcoin. Nobody else does. So basically, what I did last time was I stuck the same thing. We took the cab, we got over here, and it's in the style that we're going to get around here. And the thing is, getting the cab back, it's not going to happen. We're not going to get picked up at the smaller zone, so we're going to have to walk basically along this all, all the way, the all the way back. But this is, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna cross over. You're gonna get your feet a little wet, that's how it is, boys. We're gonna camp on this island and we'll, we'll see if they bring any, any groups. Sounds fun. Walking around. With a lot of these files miles, what they are is... Files miles. Files miles <laughs> is, what, what a lot of these migrants are doing is, when they're in Guatemala and they cross illegally into Mexico, the first town they hit is called Tapachula. Now when they hit Tapachula, uh, legally, they're not actually allowed to travel past that because they're in Mexico illegally, right? Mm. So what the Tapachula government officials are doing is they're issuing these people 
what I what I'm calling them is fake humanitarian visas. So what they're doing is they they issue them like a uh, humanitarian visa for 30 days, 60 days. Yep. First of all, what's a humanitarian visa for 30 and 60 days? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So, uh, but what that visa does is it gives them the legality to travel through Mexico and then cross into the U.S. illegally. Correct. So it's a basically okay. the Mexican government saying, hey, here's a 30 day pass, travel through our country. We don't yep. give a damn how you do it, but make it you know make it to some type of border town and then get into the U.S. Like that's that so. It's, you know, they're, they're a kind of feeling this as well. So you oh, we've just got some oh, here, look, look. so they're, they're Dude, everywhere. Perfect, boom. See another one, boom. See, the, all these are issued in uh, Tapachula. This guy came from Nicaragua. Born in 95, 27 years old. And he only got a, a visa issue for seven days. Wow. <laughs> he, a, he, only, he only got a week. He's a future doctor and lawyer, <laughs> guaranteed. So guys, we've just come across some people that actually are crossing the border, but the opposite way. So I guess Texas, Texas isn't that nice, but you know, they're smuggling. smuggling. We don't know what they're doing. So we just look just over here, and that's how far the actual um, the actual river is. So at the moment they're going up to waist deep. Okay, it's they're getting deeper dramatically, and look how far we have to go, guys. Look how far we have to go. They're not holding on to one another. What's on their um, shoulders? Is it kids or is it a bag? We're not too sure. It's a bag. Yeah. Should we should we go and meet them the other side? You think they're smugglers? Yeah. Yeah. They're coming back. They probably just brought people up. Guys, they're about to uh, so guys, they're about to cross the border. It's it's really windy. It's not good at the moment, but we'll see what's gonna happen. Have a look. They're beginning to cross. Oh man, things are gonna go bad. I I can feel it. This is not a good moment. We got kids as well. Let's see what happens. Someone's coming down. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, what's, uh, what's going on? So, these guys, I think they're going to try to cross. Yeah, and they said that there's more people coming. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm guessing we go go with them and document it yeah i think we're gonna we're gonna stay here and document we're gonna save that i guess we should cross and just chill with it i guess we should go cross over there meet them all of them this this yeah, might be well this will be good for you miles so you can see what's going for i mean yeah, good. these are two very little kids that are about to cross the fucking field you know, crazy ass kids yeah yeah, yeah, yeah i just really don't I, want to jump in and have to save their lives miles miles you're gonna want to get this on film yeah, yeah. yeah. well yeah yeah and the current is ripping and probably not gonna make it to the yeah Hey, we don't even know if they're the dad. Well, the guy was asking me. The guy was asking me if the U.S. immigration would let them enter with the kids. You know, you know that they need the kids. Here. Yeah. So the Venezuela, señor. Venezuela, mano. What is it? 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 What is it?
reunirme con los que están tratando de insistir para que si lo van a abrir de nuevo por el mismo. Yo tengo mi familia en Venezuela. Me siento un mío contra de como como de todo, porque uno está trabajar, poder, poder prosperar, salir hacia adelante. Sí, 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 eso es que es lo 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 Mandarles tengo, claro, tengo miedo de, de atravesar y que me vuelvan a enviar para, para atrás. Señor, Entonces, ¿tiene un mensaje? Ando sin dinero, ando sin nada. ¿Tiene un mensaje por el presidente Biden? Por el presidente de Estados Unidos, ¿tiene un, un, un mensaje? Bueno, por este, lo que estamos tratando de cruzar y reconocemos pues, que muchos, muchos venezolanos entraron al país a, a echar a perder todo. Los sueños de las personas que en verdad venían a trabajar. Ellos se encargaron de pisotearlo. As you can see, they're stopping quite a bit because they're quite hesitant. You know, they're realizing oh, we can really get swept away. I mean, look, it's up, it's up to their uh, chest at the moment. So I, I hope, I hope we make it across alive. Like you know, I don't wish people to die as a Christian, as a Catholic. I don't want a legal immigration to happen. I just wish there was more defenses so people weren't tempted to do this stuff anyway. And make it and as I'm watching this happen it's a tough time and the issue is guys that's how easy it is to cross the US border and this is a dangerous day as well so it's usually a lot easier but they've just managed to do it without issue and it took them 30 seconds the border guards are detaining them they're just walking across like it's some sort of uh, play days it's really sad to see the state of the US under Joe Biden. I mean, I don't get political, but yeah, he's not my favorite. And there they go to uh, to the US, I guess. Hola. They're waving to us. Hey, mate, can you shout in Spanish? Uh, can you shout in, shout in the language? Uh, uh, vote Republican. Vote Republicano. Republicano. Well, after a long day of work, we go cross back into uh, the US, so we'll see how easy it is. A husband, wife, and the, and the daughter, oh, they're Cubans. No fatalities. The husband, uh, the story that they gave me, I interviewed the mother, the wife, she said that they were. They're Cuban, they were transiting through Mexico and someone was giving them a ride uh, going along to get to wherever destination they were going to and the person had a vehicle accident. And the uh, the, the the mother and the daughter were not, uh, they were not really injured, but uh, the husband, the father was, he was hurt pretty bad. Is that why he's like this? Yes, yeah, he's, we don't know if he has a broken leg or a fracture. Oh, uh, he's also got a laceration to his forehead, but these injuries are a couple days old. These happened about oh, what they're telling us is about three to four days ago. And, and he still decided to yeah. jump in. And they still decided to go in and cross. So they're going to take this. They're going to take the male to the hospital, and the, uh, the mother and the daughter are going to be taken for processing by border patrol. Yeah. But yeah, the, the dad's in pretty bad shape. He's, he'll make it, thank goodness. Not in any life, but they're not like that. Oh, thank God. That's insane, though, for the cost. With the wires, the current strong says, Yeah. I mean, was, it, was it the boat crew that found him? Yes. The boat crew picked him up while they were caught. 